Most Ambernic Android handhelds, like the RG405M or the RG556, come pre-installed with a built-in front end. Now, it's not the best front end, but it's better than having to set up and launch games from each individual emulator app. It's a good option for people just getting into the hobby or for those who don't like spending a lot of time setting things up. After watching this video, you will know everything you need to set up and use the Ambernic front end to its full potential. Let's get on with it. So this front end was made to work with the stock SD card that can come with an Ambernic device. And when used with one, it requires almost no setup, but it can still work with non-stock SD cards with a little extra setup. Let's go over how to set up a non-stock SD card for use with the Ambernic front end. If you do plan on using the stock SD card, you can go ahead and skip to the next section. So first, we need to format it. You'll want to connect your SD card to your computer using an SD card reader. I'm going to do this in Windows, but I'll have instructions for Mac users in the description. You should then see the SD card show up on your left-hand side of the File Explorer window or your device list under this PC. Formatting will delete everything on the SD card, so check and back up anything you don't want to lose. We will use Rufus to format the SD card, as the Windows formatter does not always clear all the partitions correctly. If you don't have Rufus, I'll have a link in the description for where it can be downloaded. Once you have it downloaded, go ahead and launch it, and it should show your SD card in the top field. You will then want to set the boot selection field to non-bootable. Double check that the file system is set to XFAT, and then type in what you would like to name the SD card here. I'm just going to keep mine as games. Then hit start and accept the pop-up, letting you know that this will be deleting everything from the SD card. Once this is done, we can start adding the ROMs. Now, you could just throw folders of ROMs onto the SD card here, but then you would have to manually link each emulator to each folder. And I found a better way to do this. I made a copy of the folder structure from the stock SD card. This allows the Ambernic front end to automatically import the ROMs like it does with the stock SD card. I'll have a link in the description to where you can download this folder structure in a zip file. Just to be clear, this zip file does not include any ROMs. It's just the folder structure layout mimicking the stock SD card. Once you download it, right click the zip file choose Extract All, then hit the Browse button and select your SD card, and then extract it here. So now on the SD card, it should look like this, with all of the different folders for different systems. You can now drag and drop your ROMs into these separate folders. Once you're done doing that, the SD card setup is finished, and we can move on to the front end setup. Put your stock SD card or the one we just set up into your handheld and then launch the front end by hitting either the dedicated front end button if your device has one. For example, on the RG556, it's the button on the bottom left with the little R on it. If your device does not have a dedicated button, like the RG405M, you can launch the front end from the Android quick menu by sliding your finger down from the top of the screen twice and tapping the option with the little R on it. If this is the first time you have launched the front end, you will be prompted with a message that it needs to be configured. You will then tap on confirm, grant access to the SD card if prompted, and then grant access to RetroArch. RetroArch will then launch and install some required files. When this is done, scroll to the bottom and select quit RetroArch. It may take a few moments here to fully set up or scan the SD card. Once it's done, the basic setup should be complete. The ROMs should be automatically scanned and loaded into the different systems here. If you were not prompted to scan the SD card, or in the future, if you add more games and you need to re-scan, you can hit the X button while at the system selection screen and then tap the confirm button to start a ROM scan slash refresh. Depending on the device you have, the front end may look a little different. 
different devices support different versions of this front end software that Ampernick has made. Now you can update your device that should bring this more in line with what you're seeing here. In order to do that, you will need to be connected to Wi-Fi and then navigate to the Ambernick update app if you have one and see if there's any updates available. So now with the setup done, let's go over the navigation and features. You can use the D-pad, analog stick or touchscreen to navigate around. You'll use A to select and B to back out, but this may be swapped if you have the Xbox control modes on. Now for the latest version, as seen on the 556 or the Cube, you can open the main setting menu by hitting select on the system select screen. Here there are some shortcuts to things like recently played games, games marked as favorites, a game search, and then in settings here, there's a theme option that allows you to change the theme to different artwork and layouts. There are not a lot of options but some of them look pretty good. The media options here let you turn on and off the front end background music. There seems to be an option for setting your own background music, but I have yet to find out how to do this. If anyone knows how, please share it in the comments. Emulator selection lets you hide or unhide systems from the main screen. The tool section has a couple of scripts to revert some settings and things back to default if you end up running into issues with anything. Now, depending on your device, the hotkeys I'm showing here may be a little different. As you can see with the 405M, it does not have that main menu like on the 556. And instead, the select button opens up the theme settings and holding down the select button brings up the console selection screen. Selecting one of these systems will take you to the game list for that system, right and left to page up and down the list. You can use L1 and R1 to navigate through the previous or next systems. Here's another difference with the older version of the 405M, where L1 and R1 page up and down the games list. And to go to the next system, you use left and right on the D-pad or analog. L2 and R2 are used to go to recently played or favorites lists. Now these two lists are specific to the system that you are currently viewing. Unlike the other favorites or recently played lists from the main menu, which shows you games across all systems. The sort tab here is for if you want to view your ROMs in a directory view where you have them sorted into different folders. Now you may have noticed some box art from the stock SD card ROMs. I tried finding an easy way to add your own box art, but the process just got so complicated that if you really wanted to do something like that, it would just be better to invest the time into learning one of the better front ends with a built-in box art scraper than trying to go through the process of adding box art to this. Now launching a game for a system for the first time may prompt you to allow access depending on the app. Sometimes you will see a controller overlay on the screen. It will either disappear after you don't touch the screen for a bit, or you can fully disable it from that specific emulator settings. Now the settings for each emulator will be different because each emulator is essentially its own app, excluding RetroArch. So I will not be able to go through all of the different settings for each one but I will go over some of the basic navigation as many follow the same menu layout. I have separated them into two groups. In the first group, while running the game, you can open the emulator menu by hitting the home or back button, and it will take you to where you can save and load states, browse settings. You can return to the game by hitting the same home or back menu button again, or if you're wanting to quit, you will just select exit game on that menu list. The other group consists of the .emu apps. With these, hitting the L2 button will open the menu. Here, you can save and load the state. And to make more changes to the settings, you will then hit B to back out to the main settings. To return to the game, 
tap or highlight the little button in the top right hand corner. To quit the game, you just hit B three times in a row after hitting L2. A nice thing about the .emu apps is that by default, they save your state automatically when you quit, and they'll prompt you to load the state when you launch the game. Now, if you want to change any of these emulators that are running by default, like if you wanted to switch the .emu for RetroArch, you will want to go back to the game selection menu and then hit the select button. And this will open up a menu where you could change the emulator used for that system. So here, instead of NES.EMU, you can change that to RetroArch. And here it allows you to choose which core to use for RetroArch. Once you've made your change, you will then need to hit save. It may not look like it did anything, but once you back out, you will see it will launch with RetroArch. At the top right, there is a game setting tab. Here, you can manually add folder paths for games. So if you are planning on using the internal storage for your ROMs instead of an SD card, or if you were going to use an SD card from another device and the scan did not automatically detect your ROMs, this is where you can go to manually add the folders that get searched. To add a folder, just hit the plus button where there is no entry next to it. Select the SD card or internal storage, depending on where your ROMs are located. Then navigate to where they are, tap the checkbox next to them, then choose select. You can then hit the start searching for games button to make it search now. Or like before, you can go back to the system selection screen and hit X for it to search all systems. Okay, so that should cover most of what you can get from the Embernic front end. I hope this information was helpful and maybe improves the on-ramp process for Ambernic Android handhelds. Overall, it's not a bad option for beginners new to these devices who want something fairly quick to set up and easy to use. It does not have all the features that a more fleshed out front end, like fancy layout options, built-in box art scrapers, and things like that. So if you're looking for something that requires a little more time and setup, but it is worth the investment, I highly recommend either using Digisho or Emulation Station for Android. I hope to release videos for each of these in the future. Like and subscribe if you found this helpful or enjoy this type of content. It really does help me out. If you have any questions or have any issues, please ask in the comments below, or you can join my Discord that I have just started where it may be easier to get a hold of me to ask questions, or you can just come and hang out and chat about retro games or handhelds. As always, thank you for watching.